Okay, we're live. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, it's Hyperbinding Livestream. Uh, Facebook decided to drop the connection at the last moment, so <laughs> yeah, as usual. Uh, nothing is perfect, um, but now we're ready to, to stream and uh, we have uh, Mark Shomoji as our guest today, a book uh, and paper conservator from Hungary. Hi, Mark. Hi. Nice, nice to have you here. Uh, my co-host Pavel Varonin uh, joins us from uh, Belgrade, from Serbia. Hi, Pavel. Hi, everyone. <laughs> yeah. And I'm Stepan Chizov. I'm in uh, Windsor, England, right now. So that's it uh, for the locations. Yeah, Mark is Mark is in uh, Budapest. Yeah, am I right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that's correct. So today we wanted to talk about some about uh, bookbinding in Hungary, about uh, book conservation, book history, and uh, Mark's work and Mark's project and more. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but let's start from the beginning, Mark. How? Oh, you... I'm so, I'm sorry, okay. uh, sorry. You <laughs> no, forgot. You forgot, you forgot. You forgot to ask our listeners to write a comment. Yeah. Uh, from where they're uh, joining us, because that's always fun to know. Yeah. So if you're willing to share at least uh, the country and preferably the city, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah. And and if you have any questions to our guest or to us, maybe, I don't know, sometimes this happens, uh, <laughs> please, please post them as well and uh, we'll do our best to answer them or we'll keep them for our future guests uh, if they are not super relevant to today's topic. But anyway, so Mark. How did you end up being a, a book conservation and paper conservation specialist? Well, I, um, I've been dealing with books. Uh, I mean, I've been focusing on books uh, for uh, almost uh, 30 years. <laughs> so <laughs> because uh, after secondary school, I, uh, I joined a bookbinding course. Um, because I've been, I mean, or I co contemplated being a conservator uh, in high school. Mm -hmm. My my dad is a conservator, um, and my mom is a librarian. So I. Um, I think we have connection issues, yeah. right? Yeah, well, let's connection. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see what happens. But. Yeah, this happens sometimes. Sorry about that. Let me send a message to Mark. At least it seems to be working on our side. At least two of us have, have a connection. At least we are talking to, uh, to each other. We yeah. don't even know if we have a connection to, uh, yeah. to the outside yeah. world. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. here's Mark. Mark yeah. is reconnected. I don't know what's happened. Yeah. Well, this happens sometimes. Anyway, so it goes in the family. That we. Uh, it goes in the family. So perhaps you could uh, uh, talk a bit more about how come you wanted to become a conservator after uh, secondary school, because that's not your typical uh, uh, career option. <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> um. I always had good uh, manual dexterity, and um, um, I don't know. I guess my uh, my dad, being a conservator, gave me um, an idea what to use it for, because I didn't want to to be an artist. I mean, I didn't feel that much to to become an artist, or, or yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, but, but yeah, did you have yes. any experience as a child working with books? No, I wouldn't say working, but I, I was always surrounded with books. My family had like uh, I don't know three thousand books in in the flat. So, uh, yeah, I always I was always surrounded by books. Um, yeah. So what can you say about about the uh, bookish tradition of, of Hungary? Because uh, we, we sort of uh, 
covered a lot of areas around Hungary, but no, <laughs> never came back to this country on our podcasts and uh, live streams. Uh, uh, I think we discussed at least something with Pavel uh, during some of our podcasts, but yeah. Yeah, we, we mentioned some of the older books, but uh, none of us have uh, any idea if uh, the uh, tradition of bookbinding, conservation, bookmaking actually survived uh, the 20th century because so many of uh, the people we interviewed from Eastern and so uh, South Europe told us how uh, socialism basically killed uh, bookish yeah. Was it uh, So it wasn't exactly like that in Hungary, you being a son of a conservator, but what was it uh, like overall? Well, my, my, my dad is not a book conservator. He's a um, conservator of ceramics and, and glass. So he's not one of the survivors of the <laughs> socialists <laughs> in that regard. But um, yeah, it, 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 it happened here as well that um, whatever equipment bookbinders had uh, was a uh, um, collectivized, so there, there were like, um, um, what's the word, like trade societies, yeah. people were forced into trade societies, uh, most of the people. And anyway, I, in my experience, uh, really, really the tradition of uh, really fine binding happened in countries of uh, prosperity. Um, so like France and, and, and England, I mean, there were like, um, <clears throat> a fairly good tradition of, um, of bespoke binding at the end of the 19th century or the, at the turn of the century, but it's never been that strong as in, as it is in, in the UK or as it's been in the UK, mm -hmm. for example. But there was some tradition. So, something that I know, I've noticed. Uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm partly Romanian, so I, I uh, have a lot of connections with, with this country, and uh, I, I always noticed that uh, one of the things about the books, uh, uh, and especially about the books that were printed in the 20th century, maybe starting with the uh, second quarter of the 20th century and later, were mass produced on very cheap paper and in paperbacks uh, which sort uh -huh. of which sort of denied the idea of rebaking these books in, into into fine bindings or leather so, sometimes people did it uh, uh, still because well it's it's better to have a hard cover for for this book even if it's uh, with with bad paper but uh, I, I i know that it's the same in in some of the other eastern european countries it it was a bit different in Russia, but wh how, what was it, the situation in in Hungary? Well, um, I mean, the most precious books were held in uh, aristocratic collections, and that certainly uh, um, suffered um, a heavy impact by the war, mm -hmm. um, and even after that, I mean, uh, they were not as belongings of aristocrats, uh, communists or communist um, um, cultural um, uh, officials did not hold uh, did not uh, hold it in in high regard, yeah. or not not as much as it should have been. But some of it survived. In, um, in museums. And uh, we have a very nice collection of uh, books of this era and plus the um, bespoke bindings or fine bindings of the turn of the century. We have a museum of applied art mm -hmm. and it has a really nice collection and they do have a, a Facebook uh, site as well. So, Especially during the COVID, um, uh, almost every day, uh, a new book uh, of, of this collection was posted. Uh, I'll share the link later because it's 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 worth to to go through. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, so maybe returning a bit to your uh, book and paper conservation uh, work and uh, uh, yeah, work. Uh, what's what's the main and focus? and edu and education? So once you uh, yeah. decided to become a conservator, what was your actual path to, uh, to this dream? Uh, yeah, just just one one more idea that uh, regarding conservation or book conservation in Hungary, uh, it, it it happened uh, the same as 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 many other countries that um, the flood in Florence in in 1966 had a huge impetus on um, developing a scientific background for uh, uh, analyzing uh, old bindings and uh, and uh, for uh, yeah, conservation processes. So it happened the same that after um, there were some Hungarian mud angels uh, in, in participating in, in, in Florence. And um, one of them uh, founded uh, a school uh, like uh, 10, 15 years after that uh, in Budapest. And and just uh, just uh, one more uh, idea to, to return to Hungarian bookbinding tradition. Uh, I, I, I must mention uh, the Corvinas, uh, the Corvina Library, yeah. which uh, uh, which in that uh, in, in in its era was uh, um, was was only second to to the Vatican Library. Uh, although it was uh, mostly produced in um, the books were produced in Italy. But um, it was shaped by by the taste of uh, King Matthias. And, and how? Would, uh, 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 sorry, uh, how would you uh, describe the Hungarian tradition? So uh, it was uh, influenced by Italy. It was uh, presumably influenced by uh, Austrian, Central Europe, uh, uh, Europe, uh, European traditions. Uh, no, were there uh, Eastern European influences? Was there something uh, entirely home homegrown? Well, the thing is that uh, Corvinas, uh, the Corvina Library, um, so it has no continuation because after King Matthias deceased, um, soon after the Turks invaded the country so and uh, the library was scattered all around the world but maybe that was its fortune because uh, or it, it was um <clears throat> somehow fortunate because uh, then some books survived so um yeah so it it, it didn't create a tradition but uh, speaking uh, or if we speak about um Bookbinding tradition, maybe around the turn of the century. So, like uh, bespoke and fine binding, that was uh, mostly impacted by uh, by William Morris and the uh, arts and crafts uh, movement. And uh, yeah, it had direct uh, links. So, uh, like a second generation, I, I know about um, a direct link with a second generation artist from the arts and craft movement called Walter Crane. Uh, he, had a, he had a direct connection with the director of the uh, um, Applied Art Museum, the museum I mentioned before. And uh, for example, one of his um, uh, wallpaper he designed with peacocks is uh, still on the wall in the museum. Uh, after a hundred century, and yeah, it's it's still very nice. Nice. Uh, I also wanted to mention that, uh, that there is uh, uh, well, there is no direct connection, but there is this uh, virtual Carvino library. Uh, in uh, I I understand that that's a Hungarian project uh, that publishes manuscripts, scans, and all of that. And there are lots of, of fine objects there. Uh, at least I I visited it not once, and uh, uh, there are some some uh, interesting things uh, from Hungary there and from uh, Eastern Europe and from other European countries. So uh, if you if you want to see some beautiful we, manuscripts, you can visit this 
uh, project. I'll, I'll post a link. Uh, uh, okay. Is it Europeana or which one is that? It's it's uh, Corvina dot Ah uh, yeah yeah yeah. Okay yeah I know that yeah yes. I I don't mm -hmm. know who who is in charge of this project. I just visited uh, it many times and well. Yeah. They use. The is the is the <laughs> national national libraries project? Yeah. Because uh, that was the second thing after after the Florence flood, uh, the second biggest impetus on on um, conservation education was uh, a so-called Corvina project in the 80s when they uh, uh, revisited the Corvinas and and their bindings and um, and um, yeah try to preserve what it's left and um, and. Um, um, yeah, some of them were, were was in a really bad condition, moldy and stuff like that. So that was a huge project in the 80s. Um, and that was also a huge impact on, on, on conservation education. So my, my path is, uh, was a bit uh, rackety <laughs> okay. because I... Uh, um, I did not join um, any course for a long time. <laughs> like I, what I what I learned, uh, I learned through uh, practice, work and experience. Working experience, yes, yes. So I, I was I was quite lucky in that regard because uh, um, after finishing my school, I worked uh, at the library of the um, um, Academy of Science and uh, the National Museum. And then I worked for a company uh, that, were, that produced um, uh, a facsimile bindings and also was in charge uh, of, uh, to, to some extent, to digitize the Corvinas. And uh, then I joined uh, a company, uh, actually the biggest uh, a private company, uh, in book conservation in Hungary, mm -hmm. that has uh, like links to uh, commercial links to um, 30, 40 um, cultural institutes uh, throughout the country. And we often went to historical libraries to, to do uh, in situ conservation jobs. Okay, and we'll also okay. again. Think... Yeah, uh, pe perhaps we can look at uh, Kavina Library for, uh, while Mark is yeah, reconnecting. Okay. Could, could you open it? I'll. I'll... Uh, I can try. Yeah. On this so, scene. so, uh, so this is indeed an amazing project. Uh, except I can't find. There is an English version. Yeah, on here the it right. is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's behind your uh, uh, your portrait. So. Uh, so, when, uh, so you uh, you can bro, uh, uh, browse it by uh, by codex, which I highly recommend. Uh, it's some of the best Renaissance uh, uh, books uh, you can find, and somewhere inside you can find uh, some of the bindings too. Yeah, so, not, not everywhere, but uh, uh, yeah, quite a lot some, of some, books some, are scanned there, and uh, uh, yeah, there are some really amazing. Uh, examples of illumination and well and and uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, manuscripts themselves the script so yeah yeah and there are some good description of, of book binding yeah. details as well yeah yeah that as well so uh, you have a lot of experience working for large institutions for uh, private companies so what's your focus at the moment uh, well, uh, after that, after that, uh, um, working for that company, I, I, I went to the UK and uh, that was a really uh, great experience. And um, in the UK, I, I, I joined a, a master course on preventive conservation. So <clears throat> that was a, that was a good one. And uh, after that, I also Could went you to perhaps, uh, uh, tell our listeners what it is. Yeah, well, it's uh, um, it's organized by uh, North Umbria University, and uh, which is based in uh, in Newcastle, mm -hmm. 
And uh, <clears throat> they do have uh, several courses on conservation there. So not only preventive conservation, but also um, easel, uh, easel painting and uh, book, even book conservation. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, most of the courses are uh, on camp campus. And I wanted to join a, a course which I can do online. So I joined uh, uh, this one, Preventive Conservation, which had, uh, which is a two years uh, master course. And, um, and uh, only at the last uh, uh, semester, you, you have um, 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 like a, a museum, um, um, work experience. experience. So it's it's like three sem semesters of theory and then uh, one semester of, of practical work. Yeah, yeah. But what what is uh, preventive conservation? Uh, what 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 what's the focus of of this? Well, pre preventive conservation. Um, it's like a generic term, and um, we studied about um, conservation cleaning uh, of all the different materials you can find in museums. Uh, also collection care, mm -hmm. uh, so learning about um, the environment or environmental parameters. And uh, we had a semester about uh, conservation science, so chemistry, physics, stuff like that. Um, and, but the, uh, the term itself preventive, uh, uh, many of the conservatives, uh, uh, conservatives we talked to would say that if it's not preventive, it's not conservation, it's, <laughs> it's restoration, which they sort of, uh, about. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, it's a, it's like a more holistic thinking and, uh, there is a difference or they make a difference of, uh, preventive and interventive conservation. So mm. preventive conservation is is prior to to the interventive, and uh, it's a more it's fo it's focusing more on the whole of the collection and not the uh, I mean plus the individual uh, objects, but its primary aim is uh, is um, its primary concern is is the the entirety of the collection. Uh, but you also worked, I understand, on some exhibitions. And I assume when you prepare an object for an exhibition, your uh, aim is somewhat uh, different uh, to just conserving it for, uh, uh, for future uh, generations. Could you perhaps tell, uh, uh, tell us about some of, the, uh, some of those exhibitions and what it involved? Um, well, uh, yeah, so, um, first exhibition that I, I um, uh, joined or first exhibitions um, I, I had to, to prepare was in the National Museum because, uh, you know, uh, it has a huge, biggest collection in the country and uh, they also, uh, they, they, they do uh, <clears throat> exhibitions of their own material, but also uh, give uh, uh, objects uh, on loan or to loan. Um, these were mostly uh, etchings and um, and uh, historical posters, stuff like that. And um, well, later when I when I lived in in space uh, in Spain and um, and uh, and worked for uh, uh, Rita Rita Udina. Um, a friend of the show. A friend of the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she um, she happened to um, to to have the opportunity to to restore um, um, the whole series of uh, the disasters of war from uh, Goya. So um, that's like um, eighty two etchings and this particular one we we prepared it for uh, for uh, for an exhibition 
because I don't know if you know the story of these uh, etchings, but uh, or the, or this series, but it um, it never it never saw the light uh, while Goya uh, lived, because it was too political. So there was there were the plates, the printing plates uh, he made, and uh, but only after I don't know. 15, 10, 15 years after his death, it was printed and it was published uh, in a book, so in a form of a book. And um, <clears throat> so it had step, step binding, mm -hmm. was pierced through all the etchings uh, at the edge. So that's, we had- That's to... awful. That's awful, yes. <laughs> a very primitive binding, but um, I mean, it was not too difficult to to repair the the holes. There were not that many holes. I think two or three holes. Yeah. So we also uh, um, washed them, so wet cleaned them, dry cleaned them, and wet cleaned them. So it was very it was a huge experience to to see the etchings to come come to to life again. Yep. Oops. Uh, uh, so but there is like sound from background of what Yeah, you, yeah, 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 yeah. I fixed it already. So, sorry. No, no, uh -huh, didn't uh -huh. fix. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know <laughs> why it doesn't <laughs> stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and we, from we what are, I remember, we are a bit we are a bit rusty. We haven't we yeah. haven't streamed for on a regular basis for quite a long time because well reasons uh so uh all the issues and all the stuff that happens uh, uh but well we'll survive we'll 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 work through it we have a comment uh, on, on facebook uh from uh, timothy bindery from vietnam uh, hello from vietnam and uh, hi timothy uh, nice to have you here and it's it's well it's it's evening in vietnam or late evening in vietnam so uh that's that's uh, a lot of uh, you know Dedication. Dedication, yeah, <laughs> to, to be with us. So if anyone else wants to, to share their location with us, uh, please tell us. It's always interesting and fun to see you from where people join us. And if you have any questions, please post them. Uh, we'll try to answer them. So, Pavel? Uh, so I wanted to ask, uh, um, Disasters of War is a big series of, of etchings. It's like dozens of etchings, 50. No, it's, eight, it's 82, 82 eight, etchings. 82. So I assume uh, preparing them for, uh, for an exhibition uh, is a big job. Uh, and uh, I, w I was always wondering, so uh, it's one thing to conserve uh, a print. It's another thing to prepare it for an exhibition, especially if it's a big series, they should look sort of similar. Are you somehow synchronizing uh, the color of uh, papers uh, if you need to wash it? I don't know. If uh, Is it a more complex job than just doing the same job 80 times? Is it more sort of? Well, in this case, uh, so th they were not that damaged, uh, actually. So the main main concern was or, or the main task was to to repair those holes and also the cleaning process because uh, uh, people often underestimate um, um, the impact of dust uh, uh, dust is a uh, in itself is a very <laughs> dangerous uh, um, um, phenomenon because a uh, it's um it's it's um it's it's a collection of 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 many different um things in the air like uh pieces of small pieces of leather uh, of of skin or uh dead beetles or um or micro crystals and whatever and um, <clears throat> so basically, uh, the way uh, it helps to deteriorate paper is that it can collect um, humidity. And also, 
uh, from the paper and from the environment. So it can it can give um, a good micro environment for for uh, for example uh, mold. Um, and um, <clears throat> also, what it does to paper is that uh, paper um, paper fibers um, shrink a bit, so they go dry. Um, <clears throat> and um, that is some something uh, that happened to 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 these etchings that. Um, by cleaning them and 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 uh, processing them through uh, wet cleaning, uh, emerging them into water, uh, the paper fibers uh, um, re received their uh, their water content they needed. So it had an impact on on the on the whole picture visually. I mean. I mean, um, not in a not in a uh, a big way, but 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 uh, they were more lively after uh, the images were more lively, and uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't I didn't I hadn't seen uh, Goya's etchings before from that close, but he was such a virtuoso, uh, like uh, within this small uh, image he used four different um, methods uh, to create dif different textures. And uh, he, was a, he was a really good draftsman, um, like uh, photorealistic and cartoonish at the same time. So yeah, it was uh, amazing. It's, it's an interesting aspect that uh, people usually understand that uh, uh, books and paper objects shouldn't be wet. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that they should be bone dry. They should be kept at the conditions that are suitable for for for, for them. Yeah, in, in many yeah, ways. I, yeah, because because a uh, paper is uh, hygroscopic, so it has an ideal water content, and uh, he finds this. Well, the paper finds uh, this balance uh, by. Um, absorbing and emitting humidity um yeah so neither too dry condition nor nor too wet and yeah we lost connection again uh we'll stay uh here for for a bit longer uh to waiting for mark to return um pavel maybe can show some more uh, objects from uh the virtual li virtual library or something or perhaps or perhaps we can uh look at disasters of war not to spoil anybody's mood but <laughs> i also wanted <laughs> wanted to read another comment so there is mm -hmm. uh, uh elizabeth westlund uh in the comments on facebook hi from sweden uh nice to have you here elizabeth um and uh Nobody else have uh, popped up. No, not not uh, uh, Reka of Boros. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the uh, uh, the name properly. It says hello, and uh, um, uh, it's it's a printer from uh, ah. from um, from Hungary. I, I, I'm I'm losing it. So uh, nice to have you here. And the mark is back. Uh, we were reading some some uh, comments and uh, uh, people's locations. So, are we? Yeah, Pavel, you can keep probably pictures for 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 a bit longer. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, Mark, returning to you. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I just I just uh, I think I just finished this idea. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, but there, uh, there, are, there are cer are certain parameters for pa paper uh, in regards of uh, humidity and uh, and temperature. Okay. Uh, I I I have a question in, in that regard. So uh, when you say you uh, wash it, I saw this on uh, on YouTube, not live, yeah. but it always scares me shitless when they yeah. take some really precious document 
and they put it into trays filled uh, with super clean water. And I always ima imagine it dis disintegrating immediately. Fortunately, it never does. But I have this uh, this question: How do you know how long to uh, uh, keep it there? And more impo importantly, uh, one thing you said uh, prompted me to ask this: When you take it out, you need to dry it. But you said that paper has its natural water content. How do you know how long to dry it for? How do you know when to stop, not to dry it out completely? Well, uh, as I said, paper uh, uh, knows by itself because it, it's, um, it's a hygroscopic material. So it's absorb and adsorb uh, water. So it finds its, its, its own balance by itself. But um, <clears throat> of course, uh, the parameters I, I, I spoke about are important. So in general or generally, um, 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 uh, room temperature like um, 20 degrees plus minus two degrees are uh, optimal and 50% uh, uh, relative humidity is optimal for paper. So if it's if it's too wet <clears throat> or too dry, the the air is is um, yeah paper can det deteriorate. Or if it's um, if it, what happened uh, for example last winter in 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 Hungary in the energy crisis that um, um, the ministry decided that uh, in certain um, storages. Uh, uh, heating is not necessary because uh, uh, objects can survive is was a ve very bad idea because uh, yeah it, many objects got moldy and stuff like that yeah that's insane um, if it's too cold and the the relative humidity is high then it's a perfect environment for the for the mold for mold but return to 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 paper it's 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 the paper structure or the the cellulose uh, structure that uh, <clears throat> um, that helps paper to to survive uh, uh, water because um, <clears throat> um, the structure of paper is uh, is partly uh, amorph and partly crist crystallite. So the amorph parts uh, absorb uh, humidity, am absorb uh, water, and the crystallite parts uh, help paper to, to, to be stable. <clears throat> so it's a very interesting, very interesting material. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh... I'll read a couple more comments. Maybe we can uh, switch to some of uh, uh, Mark's project after that, Pavel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think it will be mm -hmm. interesting to talk about it. So uh, I saw something else here. So book around uh, Savazdi from Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, so also late evening, uh, as far as I understand, uh, almost night probably, or already night, uh, hi there. Uh, Inge Bruggemann. Uh, uh, I'm in Berkeley, California, where I teach a class on the history of the printed book at the Bancroft Library at uh, UC Berkeley, and I'm director of uh, the Codex Foundation uh, Artist Book Fine Press. Wow, nice, <laughs> nice to have yes. you here, Inge. Um, so yeah, uh, let's let's move to the projects. Uh, uh, do you want me to uh, open any of the photos? Yeah, please do. Oh, uh, which Instagram one? or or Instagram or, or or the other one, the the ones I I sent. Uh, well, uh, well, we, uh, do you want me to begin? Yeah, you said you you have some questions about uh, that. Oh part. yes, yes, I uh, I do. Uh, wait a second, let me 
So on Instagram, there are lots and lots of fun photos, but I especially enjoyed uh, enjoyed looking at this project of uh, uh, of yours. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 could, uh, could you tell us about what it is, what you had to do uh, to it? What was it? So it's a it's a parchment uh, charter, uh, like. Um what's the word um mm, to don donate nobility to someone and it was in um it's a it's 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 private uh, uh ownership so it was not for a for a museum or a cultural institute and uh i got it through someone through another conservator and um yeah the 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 request was to to flatten it. That's what happens often to to parchment charters. That um, <clears throat> uh, parchment is much more uh, susceptible to deformation than paper. Because uh, I don't know if you spoke about it on on iBook binding, but but parchment is is a, a, a type of uh, um untanned leather so it's the basic material is the same as a uh, as any other leather it's just uh the um <clears throat> preservation uh, for usage does not happen by chemical means but it happens by physical means so the 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 way they achieve that uh the collagen fibers that uh, uh, skin consists uh, they stretch out the they stretch out the skin and and uh, this way they achieve that the fibers uh, get detached from from one another and um, <clears throat> that's how uh, so by drying it in this stretched state and uh, and also um, um uh, what's the word detaching all the all the perishable uh material on it they achieve that that parchment uh, becomes what it is like a smooth uh flexible material but uh the downside of 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 this kind of um <clears throat> Treatment is that uh, it's very sus susceptible to to environmental changes, and um, if it gets dusty and uh, there, there if there is uh, too big fluctuations in in uh, um, environmental parameters, then it it gets deformed. So this is what what happens, and and uh, this is. What I often have to do uh, where I work now at the National uh, Archives, that uh, we have to often flatten parchment after cleaning it. We do not wet wet clean wet clean parchment, uh, unlike the paper, <laughs> uh, only dry cleaning. But after 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 cleaning it, you have to very carefully. Uh, and gradual by gradual uh, um, humidification, you can you can flatten it. And, and I uh, and I, uh, I assume there are limits to what you can do. Speaking of cleaning, because here we can clearly see that somebody uh, kept it folded in two, and uh, image leaked on the other half. Would it uh, have been at all possible to remove uh, those traces or even desirable? Uh, uh, is it a line you don't cross? Uh, why did you mm. leave it as it is? Yeah, that, that was not the part that was not part of the request to, to remove that. And um, probably, I mean, I could have uh, removed it mechani mechanically, mechanically um, in some way, 
but uh, I think this this type of stains uh, can be regarded as a, as a part of the history of the object. Um, I don't know. I I can't I I, I can't remember. Uh, I don't think I I considered to remove it. Um, yeah. And, and, so, and what about those extra bits, uh, like uh, like seals and ribbons and cords? Uh, uh, do, uh, do you ever conserve them yourself, or do you yes. uh, do you give them to a specialist? And what kind of uh, treat, uh, treatments do they need, especially mat uh, materials like wax? Uh, I imagine treating them is not an easy task. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also I will also intervene because I, I also had this question about your uh, conservative work uh, as you are a paper and book conservator and uh, seemingly book conservation is is a much wider uh, area of uh, you know knowledge and skill and everything so what's your preference yeah. there <laughs> what do you prefer <laughs> well I, I I like parchment I mean uh, in general as a conservator you often have to come across uh, um, so-called composite objects that uh, consist not only of one material, but if you think of a, a medieval book, it had, uh, you know, leather, uh, wood, um, um, clasps, and, and, cla and clasps, and metal, 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 metal of course, yeah. <laughs> metal, yes. So yeah. Uh, Objects are often often composite objects. Um, in this case, uh, this parchment, uh, it was not me who, who uh, uh, conserved uh, the the uh, cord and the wax seal, but <clears throat> at the National Archives, I I, I conserved um, this stuff. Uh, if if a charter <clears throat> comes. To to my table. So what we do is, uh, what open, often uh, happens is that apart from uh, being dirty, uh, uh, I mean the, the cord, uh, it, it, um, uh, it often un, uh, rap, unravels, like uh, it gets frayed, you know, all these different uh, small cords. Uh, yeah, I think we lost connection uh, again. So that's something uh -huh. that happens today. Uh, uh, what? Well, let, let, let's let's lo let's uh, let's look at um, uh, some of the books from Kavina Library. Why not? <laughs> uh, uh, I I uh, I wanted to uh, to point uh, uh, interested viewers uh, to uh, descriptions uh, of the uh, manuscripts. They often have uh, dedicated pages just about the bindings, and uh, and uh, some of that uh, these uh, can be pretty interesting. Yeah, like... that that's exactly one of the reasons I like this uh, website website and digitized collection so much because uh, so many uh, museums and libraries have digitized uh, books and manuscripts, but they don't have. Uh, any information on the bindings, which is so upsetting to me. So yeah, uh, this is and so much better. It's not just photos. It is a very decent scholarly description uh, uh, of the binding. I can only uh, compare it to what uh, British Library has started doing uh, ten years ago. So it's yeah. just look at just look at that. I mean. It's pages and pages and pages of text with very good details. Yeah, yeah. So we, we were just great. discussing, Mark, that uh, uh, Virtual Carvina uh, Library has a lot of information on bindings, which is uh, yes, a, huge, descriptions, yes. a huge benefit compared to many other digital collections, which uh, either have uh, at most uh, a couple of photos of the bindings, but sometimes even, even that is not available. So they focus on the... Uh, contents of the book on the pages, but uh, they uh, missed the, the structural elements uh, uh, almost completely. So that's that's a 
huge plus of this collection and uh, props to the yeah. Na national library as you said that it, it's a project of the national, national library and and this page is an outcome of a, of a, a major exhibition that uh, happened in um, in i think it was like four years ago yeah and uh they they try to collect um for this display uh, as many corvinas from around the world as they could i think that was the probably the biggest uh exhibition uh, of corvinas uh ever and uh that's that that page that website is the outcome of that uh research they made so nice. yeah it's it's very good so coming com, coming back to uh, 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 to your work, so conservation of individual threads uh, and uh, conservation of wax. What? Well, at least at least yeah, clean cleaning of the threads, and um, and um, what uh, happens uh, often or or uh, what can happen is that you have to um, re twist them and, and make sure that they does not come off and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, you can, you can achieve a, a nice work, a nice result. But, and also, uh, but is there a problem uh, with the fact that they are attached to, to the parchment? Things you can do to threads are presumably different to what you can do to parchment. So do you have to detach yeah, them you have, or if they you attached, have to be you have to be more you have to be more careful and uh, and uh, and because you can't take it off, um, um, you have to isolate everything around. So uh, even if you use uh, a very little um, humidity or or, or, or a, a cleaning uh, agent to to clean the threads. You have to isolate the parchment because um, you cannot afford that uh, that the parchment uh, goes wet while you clean the thread. And what about what about uh, the wax uh, wax seals themselves? Because I've seen uh, lots of them in museums and archives and libraries, <laughs> and they are usually the dirtiest part of, of the document. Uh, is it because it's uh, um, it's very little you can do to them, or wh why? Well, uh, we at the at the National Archives we we always clean them, and. Um, uh, because what what you see there, the uh, <clears throat> well, wax wax can can become easily dirty because it's a sticky sticky material, so it attracts uh, dirt. And um, but you can you can you can clean it. Uh, I don't I don't have um, an image to show, but I'll share it on on my Instagram uh, later. Uh, the cleaning process you can you can achieve really nice results um it's a it's a really meticulous uh work to clean it i, I mean it can take uh, a small uh wax to clean a small wax uh, seal can take uh i don't know several hours but it gives a really nice result and often what happens to to the um What's the word um, to the to the yellow part that that holds uh, that protects the the actual seal is that it um, it breaks and there are also um, procedures to to fix them to keep them together or to re reattach the the the, the broken parts. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you have to take care of the the seals because it has, um, um, you know, uh, juridical significance or whatever. It, I mean, uh, the historical sig sig significance is the same as as the as the content of the parchment. 
Uh, so, well, actually, there are quite a few uh, uh, early medieval and even late medieval uh, uh, people, the only images of whom come from the, uh, their uh, wax mm -hmm. seals. There are even some kings that we, uh, only have some idea of what they look like is from the, these images. Uh -huh. So, of, co of course, that. it's important. Um, so, th uh, that is that. Uh, I had some... Uh, what is what is this uh, uh, project? The, uh, and what are the, those strips? Yeah, so uh, that was uh, uh, like... Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to ask you if, uh, if they, are, they were backsides of the uh, uh, signature or something like that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Exactly, exactly. Yes, they are. So that, what, that's a, a very interesting and, and recent project uh, uh, organized uh, uh, by... Uh, there is a, um, um, an institute called... Uh, a center called... Uh, uh, European Center for uh, Conservation and Restoration, uh, based in uh, Austria, and um, <clears throat> and uh, Professor uh, Patricia Engel, who is uh, the head of this center, she organized this uh, winter school. It took place in March, and um, so what happened here? It's uh, it's uh, one of the biggest. Uh, uh, monastery in Austria and one of the oldest monastery in Austria. So it looks back like uh, the fourth century, the foundation of this monastery. Uh, apparently, uh, uh, Saint Florian um, was killed nearby and his body was buried on the ground of the monastery, of the later monastery. So anyway, it's a, it's a monastery with a huge past and they have a, a holding of um, fifth, no, uh, 150,000 books in, the, in their library. And from that uh, huge amount, uh, eight, about 800 books are from the Middle Ages. And <clears throat> Uh, what happened to the bindings was that um, uh, uh, is what happened to, to, to many, many medieval bindings that they were re rebound uh, in the 20th century, uh, second half of the 20th century. They were rebound, but <clears throat> uh, luckily, uh, 160 of the original bindings survived and uh, was discovered uh, recently. Uh, these were kept in, 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 in boxes somewhere in the in the storeroom. Uh, so they, they were the... lost and that's the only reason they, they survived, <laughs> as, as, as it happens. <laughs> well, no, not exactly, because uh, there was a, there was a book bind, bookbinder lady yeah. who uh, who rebound all the books, but for some reason she kept uh, these 160 okay. uh, original bindings. So what 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 happened at the winter school was that um, uh, the uh, the center invited uh, us. So it was quite uh, only only eight or nine nine of us was was there, but it was pretty international. Even there was one uh, a conservator girl, even from Mexico, and uh, from Bulgaria, from Croatia, from uh, Slovenia, uh, Lithuania, um, and also there was a, a lady from from the U.S. Uh, she lives in Norway. So yeah, it was pretty international. So they. The, the, the project was about uh, to examine these original bindings, or at least for these five days, we examined uh, each, each person, each people, each participant uh, examined two, uh, two original bindings. And we had to give a really detailed description. And <clears throat> we also learned a lot about um, uh, the legatus uh, way of describing uh, 
uh, books and and, and uh, historical bindings. So I don't know if you have heard about uh, this uh, Ligatus project, but uh, Ligatus is a is a, a UK based uh, research group and uh, with um, leading conservators such as uh, Nicholas Pickwood and the late uh, uh, Christopher Clarkson. Mm -hmm. So they, they developed a, a so-called language of binding, which is a um, <clears throat> um, um, a certain um, description of structural parts of the of historical bindings and you have to correlate your description to that type of uh, language uh, and by this uh, correlation you will be able to to have uh, um, semantic uh, web structures to um, to make it researchable for for the artificial intelligence or or for uh, for um, yeah for semantic web structures. This is so extremely very interesting. interesting. Could you name somebody uh, uh, in uh, uh, who's part of this project on a per, uh, on a per permanent base? I I really I, I'd really love to talk Pasha, to someone. Pasha, Pasha wants a wants a new guest. <laughs> yes. That yeah. Too. Well, the the head of this project is is Patricia Engel. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe after after we we, we finish our live stream, uh, you'll, yeah, you'll send yeah, us yeah. a message uh, or something. Like, not I not have quite yeah. a few questions. Not, you, not you, so, you mentioned many interesting people. Yeah. <laughs> not yeah. so out people uh, right during your live stream, uh, but. Hmm. <laughs> 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 Uh, uh, now I, I looked it up. I realized I heard about this project. They started doing it uh, as part of the scanning of the uh, Mount Sinai, uh, Sinai, Saint Catherine. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Library. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. Uh, that's uh, uh, one of uh, Father John's uh, 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 project initially. I didn't know it grew uh, internationally. That's really interesting. That yes. project generates news all the time. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and so perhaps you could uh, you could uh, tell us what you found in, in one of uh, in one of those uh, binding and uh, bindings and how detailed did you have to be to uh, d uh, uh, describe it? Very, very, very detailed. Very, <laughs> very intricately detailed. So, because <clears throat> we, we received all the documentations of these bindings, there was like a, a inventory made, uh, written uh, at the end of the 19th century of all the uh, medieval bindings at this library. So we received that and um, it was mostly a um, um, description of the content, but, but there was some, some notes about the binding as well and we received also uh, the notes of this uh, bookbinder lady um, and she made some some photographs before and after she rebound the the, the manuscript but she was she was actually a quite quite a good uh, 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 bookbinder but um, as you know the the uh, the ethical, the conservation ethics were different, or the yeah, we, we, the main. We, we, we don't question her credentials or anyone credentials in this way. It's it's, yeah. it's true that uh, uh, hundred years ago and even uh, fifty years ago, the approach was uh, up to even twenty years ago, the approach was uh, very different to to what it is now. And uh, uh, keeping all the uh, bindings wasn't a thing until quite recently. In if if you if you look at the whole book, uh, history of book binding and uh, well yeah which, we all, which, we all... which probably was extended uh, uh, pretty recently by by a couple of hundred years or four hundred years or something like that. <laughs> Uh, uh, we often mention uh, uh, mention the case of Nakhamadi Library, which had the oldest 
by and bindings in in existence and yes. what did they do the moment they found them they disposed the bindings yes and they barely photographed the uh, uh, the details we have yes. overall look but the structures of the oldest bindings yes <laughs> exactly yeah so what what was interesting for me uh, among many other things was that uh, I examined a, a Romanesque binding, which uh, <clears throat> mm. uh, doesn't have, I mean, there, there is no existing Romanesque binding in, in, in Hungary. Uh, there, are, there are Romanesque uh, manuscripts, but, but there is no Romanesque binding in Hungary. I mean, I know it's, it's quite rare uh, all over the world, like uh, a few hundred, Original bind, original Romanesque bindings, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty interesting to to examine from close uh, a Romanesque binding, Definitely. the robustness. And presumably, and... Uh, those uh, fragments are even older than. Well, not not necessarily. I mean, <clears throat> I think in that era. Um, uh, the binding was the production of the monks in the monastery, as as well as the manuscripts. So, probably was it was produced on the spot, I guess. No, I I, I mean the uh, these cuttings of uh, of parchment. Uh, they, uh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. If they yeah, read might be. them, yeah, they have yeah. to be even older by at least say a hundred years. Yes. Yes. Oh, lucky you, lucky you. <laughs> Yeah, so it's 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 going to be have a, it's going to have a, a continuation, and we are already uh, invited uh, at the end of this uh, winter school. We were invited back um, to to uh, pop up anytime we want. To and, have and some more fun about, there. Was some more fun? Yes. Poke <laughs> <Spoke> around. <laughs> So what was the oldest object that you had to to work on or to work with in your uh, ex work working experience? Well, I mean, if if you consider uh, examining something, that was the oldest one, definitely. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. I, apart especially from that, especially I, the stubs, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So yeah, that, that was the oldest. But um, if we speak about uh, a whole binding, I don't know, maybe um, a Renaissance, um, Renaissance Bible from from the 16th century, maybe. Okay. As a whole, as a as a whole binding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole object. And what was the, the toughest project? Uh, I don't know, maybe something uh, which was really fragile or something like that. What's what's in your experience the, the toughest project? Well, uh, two years ago, uh, I was invited to to conserve um, uh, objects uh, in the Holocaust, Holocaust Center, and uh, these were objects uh, belongings of. Um, of victims or survivors, or I, I don't, I, I didn't really uh, got to know the the history of these objects. Mm -hmm. But um, there was, for example, one parchment fragment of a of a Torah, and. Uh, <clears throat> Um, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure if it was an educated guess or, uh, or it was uh, the actual story of this parchment. But it was folded uh, for uh, in four. And um, what I heard about this object that it was um, buried uh, uh, with someone. In, it was in in someone's pocket while buried. And when they. Uh, um, um, uh, ex exhumate the person they found uh, the Torah page and it was really really frail so you could see that uh, nature 
worked on this object, but still some some fragments of text you could recognize. So it was, uh, yeah, very interesting um, and sad um, object. And, uh, and is this a new uh, museum? Uh, I, I've, I've, ne I've never heard of, uh, of it before. Uh, are you uh, are you uh, still working there? Uh, is uh, are there lots of paper objects uh, to be conserved there? Yeah, yeah, like uh, it's the national it's the national archive, so it's like endless uh, amount of uh, <laughs> objects. But uh, for example, uh, just uh, a few months ago, I happened to conserve um, one of the stock. Uh, like, I don't know, 400 pages that was uh, partly burned in um, in 56 when there was this uh, revolt in Hungary revolution. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, um, you know, there were like uh, um, clashes of, uh, um, yeah, so one one of the one of the bombs uh, hit the roof of the archives and it was burning for like uh, several days or even weeks but what happened to the stocks was that they they were they were um, kept in such a tight uh, a manner that uh, no oxy oxygen could go uh, at the center of the of the tag of, of the uh, the fonts, so only only the perimeter or or the edge uh, burnt. So that we had to conserve. It, the, these were like uh, uh, 17 and 18 century uh, manuscripts. So yeah, it was like a really meticulous project to conserve them. Uh, we had to clean them and and uh, uh, leaf cast them. You know that's that's a method to to reintegrate paper. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a it's a it's a very clever uh, way. Um, like. Uh, as far as I know, the history of leaf casting or using a leaf casting machine. So it, it tries to emulate or try, tries to, um, uh, yeah, emulate, emulate uh, um, um, paper, uh, paper casting uh, with a machine. Yeah. And uh, it was, I think it was de developed in Bulgaria or in, in, the, in the Soviet Union in the 60s or in the 70s. But it's a, it's a really good it's, it's a re, it gives a really nice result. No, no, I don't think I've ever heard of uh, something like that. Uh, you mean it's done mechanically, and not uh, not by hand? It 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 can be done by hand, <clears throat> but yeah, it it can can be executed uh, me mechanically in a machine. Yeah, we, we talked about this uh, with Rita Udina uh, on our podcast yes. uh, two years ago, <laughs> something like that, like uh, a long time ago. Well, uh, in in the history of our uh, podcast, and uh, I'll I'll share the link to uh, to the chat both on YouTube and uh, Facebook uh, because it was uh, a, a part of this talk dedicated to uh, well paper casting machine and. Uh, uh, repairing uh, uh, losses in in paper in in general. So, Rita is is an amazing yeah. tutor and uh, and speaker. So it's always uh, interesting to to listen to her uh, talking about uh, book conservation and well anything else. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, if anyone is interested, just check the link and uh, uh, you'll see the the, the 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 bit that was dedicated to um, casting paper and. Uh, I also wanted to uh, ask. Rita, yeah, uh, yeah. That, that's what I wanted have, to ask. We have, we have time to dis, uh, to discuss uh, so, uh, some of your uh, uh, other projects. Could you talk us through uh, through the uh, through this? Uh... Yeah. So this is a 
this is an 18th century uh, uh, book. It's a it's a Latin Hungarian uh, uh, medical dictionary, the first Latin Hungarian medical dictionary. Uh, it's a very famous book, and, and it, I, this particular book I, I happen to own because I bought it in, in an auction, and uh, it's like a late Baroque binding, and um, so it was in a in a pretty uh, sad state. Uh, the, the, spot, the yeah, <laughs> the, <laughs> the insect holes and. Uh, the, the black spots you, you, you've seen on that uh, page, these are uh, mold uh, spots coming from the backboard. Uh, and uh, about a quarter of the book was infected by these spots and by mold. And uh, the spine was distorted, as you, you could see on one of those images. Uh, one one back or two back. Oh, yeah. yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. So it was distorted. So yeah, I I I took this project uh, as as a as fun because it's my it's my book. So but basically, that's what you I, do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, par uh, partly because of of the fun, but uh, I also wanted to. There is a. Um, as as you certainly know, there there is a there are bookbinding competitions in the UK, yeah. uh, organized by the Society of Bookbinders and also the Designer Bookbinders, and uh, like uh, more than ten years ago, so in 12, uh, uh, 2012, uh, I I participated with this object uh, in uh, in one of the competitions of the Society of Bookbinders. And uh, yeah, so I I had to <clears throat> dismantle the book and uh, clean it, de desinfect it, and uh, re-sew re it. And, and um, also the, yeah, the, the binding was in a, in a pretty bad state. So, I had uh, to. Uh, it doesn't even look salvageable, but you did salvage it in the end. Yeah, yeah, I I could manage to uh, to to save it. Yes. And there, are, th these are fly specks. So, okay. These these black spots are, are uh, fly sheets, basically. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my and god! The, that, yeah, that's that's, the, that's the, uh, uh, the backboard. Yes, the mold, the source of the mold. That's insane. Yeah. So, so what what do you do? What do you do with 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 such such a huge amount of mold? Well, it didn't seem to be active anymore. So uh, in conservation, we we uh, make a difference between <laughs> active mold and, and passive mold. Basically, mold uh, spores happen to happen to be everywhere. So yeah. uh, they are ubiquitous. And uh, but it's the environment that uh, that um, makes them uh, alive or uh, helps them to uh, to get root on on objects. So uh, the the mildest uh, method we can uh, apply is um, um, dry dry them by applying uh, uh, ethyl ethylene mixed with uh, water. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't I, I can't remember exactly what I did, but I certainly applied some some uh, ethylene on that. Mm -hmm. And then so just, just, just mechanical removal, or uh, without removing it. So you left it uh, there, but made sure that it's no longer active. I th I think uh, so. In in the case of the uh, the backboard, I think I replaced it. I I have to look it up, but probably I I I just uh, disposed the the, the backboard. Uh, 
but uh, you know I, I, I still had to uh, apply some treatment on the pages mm -hmm. and apart from disinfecting it uh, I had to uh, to some extent I had to or I, I wished to to um, uh, what the word what's, what's the word uh, to to make the the black spots less apparent so fade fade them and uh, I used some <clears throat> some um, non chlorine uh, um, chemicals to to fade that black those black spots mm -hmm. yeah okay that sounds like lots of work yeah yeah I I can't remember how many hours were these, but I guess it took like a uh, hundred hours. Yeah, so that's what I, I I've guessed when when I saw that the the the, the photos. Yeah, or maybe even more. Yeah. And this is the uh, uh, the finished the, the finished finished object. Yeah. And is it is it still on your bookshelf? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 still in my possession, and uh, sometimes I, I I show it as a as a demonstration uh, on my workshops or 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 wherever. Uh, yeah. Nice labor uh, labor of love. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it's uh, the same spine we saw earlier. Uh, that 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 that's really cool. Yeah, thanks. So, uh, how did you uh, how did you achieve it? How did you reinforce it? Did you put something on the back? What? Yes, yes, that's 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 what I did. Mm. Okay. There are two methods to <clears throat> to repair uh, old bindings. So either you use uh, patches there there is a hole, uh, or uh, or um, or you just um, make a new new binding and reattach the old one, and um, and I use the latter one. So, but I I, I think I I um, pair uh, some of the old leather, so that's why it's so flush. Mm -hmm. uh, I I made I made it a bit thinner. Uh, than originally it was but it's yeah it's it's at the end it really matches uh did you buy it as a potential pet project uh, i i mean no. not many people would no no i i bought it uh at the time when i thought uh, i i would collect books <laughs> but <laughs> i mean that like antiquarian books uh as a you know as a as a hobby in fact i mean i own a lot of books uh, but uh, i rarely buy them uh, at auctions uh, yeah and i just realized that it's uh, i don't have the budget to to buy books at auctions i mean it was like uh, almost 20 years ago and uh, you know the 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 whole uh, assessment of of books were different by then uh, could probably make, books. Uh, could you make like a side hustle out of it buying distressed books uh, making them look shiny and all new again and selling ba uh, them back on the market <laughs> or with all the hundreds Pasha, of hours Pasha, hundred, hundreds of hours uh, how, how how much uh, do you think it, it costs to, to repair this book <laughs> It, it, it's just, it, it's it's worth doing only only on the top uh, uh, most most expensive bindings or something like that, or for museum projects which have you know work for some yes, time. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I I had this experience uh, repairing uh, a similarly sized book which had much less mold, but uh, it still had some damage and uh, 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 broken spine and all of that and. Uh, Initially, uh, I, I thought it was uh, uh, a simple uh, repair of the uh, book cover uh, because, well, I, I was shown the photos, and in the in the process, I found out that I, I have to disassemble this book, uh, wash some of the, at least some of the pages, 
uh, uh, resew it together and uh, do a lot of additional job and uh, something that I consider that I'll spend uh, something like five, five hours so I've spent 120 hours in the end and in the end I, I didn't even charge the client because it was like I have to renegotiate re everything and it was like it's no way I can I can tell my client that uh, this book will cost like 25 times time, times more than, than what I asked initially and uh, and that was yeah. one of one of the projects after which I stopped doing any repair works uh, at all <laughs> so I was like nope thank you <laughs> I want a fixed price <laughs> yeah well I guess I mean um there is a very different pricing uh, in in Hungary than, for example, in the UK. So, I would probably recons reconsider uh, this kind of jobs if if I still lived in in the UK. But in in, in Hungary, uh, yeah, it's not. People usually don't um, don't want to pay that much for a repair that it it's worth to to do it. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. But well, that's unfortunately something that happens uh, all over the Eastern Europe, and the, the yeah. workforce is cheaper. And uh, uh, some some people find uh, opportunities to work for uh, German, uh, French, uh, British, American customers living in the Eastern Europe, and uh, that that may be yes. a, a nice solution. But it it introduces some tricky logistics there because well, you are working with fragile and uh, expensive objects. Uh, yeah, you need insurance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that, and, that, and, that, and that also works. sending in and out of country antique books could be uh, tricky, tricky yeah. in yeah. legal terms yeah. too. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, I, as far as I understand, in most of European countries, uh, if 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 the book is not uh, truly unique and uh, put on some sort of list. Uh, usually you can uh, export and import it uh, pretty easily but there are yeah there are some limitations some uh, risk factors yeah yeah yeah, yeah. also sometimes I, I know for example that in, in in romania you can export and import books uh, to the european union without any e issues and problems but if you want to move it out to the united states or something like that there are some uh price limitations or whatever or age limitations or something but yeah uh, uh -huh. i i, I I, I don't think I, I've seen uh, in, in in any European countries uh, uh, sh as strict limitations as uh, uh, there are in Russia because in Russia for any book older than 50 years you have to get a, uh, a, a paper from the Ministry of Culture uh, uh, that this book really? does, doesn't doesn't present any cultural value so you can export it <laughs> and and, wow. and and for anything older than 100 years it's 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 just prohibited to export it unless it's uh, for a temporary museum exhibition so mm -hmm. and it was before and now uh, with the uh, invasion uh, to the ukraine uh, uh, invasion to ukraine and uh, all the issues related to that uh, uh and the uh, russian uh russian side uh, being afraid of uh, uh uh objects being arrested it's just <laughs> whole other story yeah i guess so that's uh, that so uh, uh, can i stop sharing the screen yeah sure um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sh i think we covered most of the things we want to talk about not everything as far as i remember but i hope uh you had yeah. some fun fun with us and uh, talked about the, the most important things. Uh, I, I think we'll uh, that will be the end of our talk today because it's already ninety minutes and uh, that's our standard format. We we probably can meet again <laughs> in the future if you have any anything uh, sure. uh, any interesting project to discuss or if you return to Austria for example and see some other uh, old book, we'd be happy to talk about it maybe to some of your colleagues as well. Uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to try something uh, uh, sort of new on, on, on our live stream today because usually when we uh, had our podcast, uh, we at the end we shared a list of our support Patreon supporters who pay us money for our podcast to continue and to cover editing and uh, other expenses. And uh, when we when we switched to 
uh, live streams we just didn't have uh, this end crawl uh, prepared or anything so uh, i never uh, i never uh, published it and we have some news new uh, supporters on patreon so uh, thank you i i you you won't see that our viewers will see that but i'll i'll run okay. it now and you can watch it later <laughs> so uh, <laughs> and that's how it works uh some of the uh you you can see uh the names uh, on the right side and many thanks to all of our supporters you can check the link in the description of this video and support us and uh, the pl pledges start with only one euro one pound or one dollar per month i hope that's not much to support our project and uh, it's really important to us because we can pay for editing of the videos and some other research work uh, and uh, there are also some other links there as well uh, links to mark's uh, tumblr i think and instagram and uh, yeah. link links to our uh, social accounts and uh, i see that elizabeth westland uh, uh, posted thanks for a great, great talk thanks for being with us uh, to the end uh, today was a strange day because we had much more viewers on Facebook compared to YouTube. Usually it's uh, 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 other way around, but well, you never know. You never know. Uh, and uh, uh, also, as usual, we'll post uh, some of the excerpts of this talk on uh, TikTok, subscribe and Instagram <laughs> later. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah, that's that. So. Uh, so thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you for being with us. I'll switch off uh, the, the streaming on uh, Facebook and YouTube, but we'll stay here for a bit longer while the uh, buffer buffering. drops. Yeah, buffering drops. And uh, then that's it. Thanks, uh, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for, for yeah, being with us today. Uh, thank you.